We've seen that Mancandy's leg rig is contained on layer 2 of his armature. There we can control the feet and the legs. The legs are IK controlled, which simply means that it has two IK targets at the heels and they terminate at the hips. So if you move the torso around, the feet won't move at all, the legs just bend to accommodate. Likewise, if you swivel the hip from left to right, you can see that the feet remain locked in place. Also, if you move the foot somewhere, it can move to that location without affecting the hips or the torso, and it will stay locked wherever you put it. The setup for Man Candy 2's IK is stretchy, so the legs can be pulled out beyond their normal stretch. As you pull them out, and of course, if you push them closer, the leg will bend to accommodate the closer position. Furthermore, let's look closer at the legs. You'll see that the stretch is spread out across the length of the leg. The knee stays in the middle. It doesn't just stretch the calf or the ankle. And that the uh, legs get a little skinnier as they stretch out. Now at the foot, you'll see that you have two more bones. First you see that the main bone pivots at the heel of the character, and that makes sense if you're animating a walk or a run for doing heel strikes, and you'll see that if you turn on subsurf heel more clearly, so you can do a heel strike and then roll the foot over the heel pretty easily like that. And then there's another pivot here at the mid middle of the foot, which allows you to push the character up on the balls of his feet, for instance, when he's stepping up. And of course, you can rotate the toes to flap them around like that. A more complete setup would have another pivot at the toes, so the character could stand on tiptoes, and maybe one at the ankle as well. But that would be quite a few pivots for an animator to keep track of. And for Man Candy, I decided to keep things simple and just have two pivot locations. And that way we could track things a little bit easier as animators. You can get further control using these little balls. There's one in the calf, one in the knee, and one in the thigh. You can also control the knee in IK by selecting this little arc here and swiveling it from side to side. Now it's a good setup in that it's not floating around and it doesn't cause the leg to flip much, but there are some extreme locations of the foot where it just won't work and you won't be able to control the knee. However, you'll see in a minute that you're not without recourse in those cases. Precise control of the knee, you can select this little ball in the middle. Now by default that works only in the plane of the leg so you can just move it in or out in that plane. You can also use it to create a squash effect instead of a bent knee effect when the heel is closer to the torso. And you can also do it to bend the leg even when it's stretched to its limit. Now another thing you can do with it Alt R here. Now another thing you can do is if you bend the leg and you're in extreme pose where this bone won't work, you can unlock the X location of this bone and use it to directly move the knee from left to right. Let's lock that again. The calf and thigh bones are used to approximate rubber hose animation that's seen in 2D styles and even some 3D styles. They let you bend the calf and thigh in the middle on a smooth curve. Now that we've seen how the leg setup works in animation land, let's go ahead and look a little bit deeper and see how that rig is set up.